Hello everyone, Douglas Waltz, Old Man Comic Book Reviews. We weren't here last week, we were busy, so we're doing a double issue. <laughs> so two weeks worth of comic books plus a special book at the end, okay? Alright, first up we have Gang War Tie-In Jackpot. Um, let me get you the people in charge. Celeste Bronfman. Uh, is our writer, our artist, our Joey Vasquez, and Eric Gapster. Uh, so Mary Jane Watson has a, how would you put it, a gauntlet that gives her jackpot powers. It turns and it goes ting ting ting, and then you get three choices of powers. I'm not really sure exactly why. They decided that Mary Jane Watson needed to be a superhero at all. The costume's fine. It's Mary Jane Watson, so it's going to look good. It's just, I don't understand why she's a superhero. And I had no idea that visors were coming back. She looks like Cyclops has got, let her borrow his visor. So, as far as the tie-in goes, they didn't let it go into the proper uh, story at all. It was nice to see She-Hulk and Spider-Man for a hot minute to let you know it's part of gang war. But, meh. Uh, there is an upcoming issue, four-issue miniseries with Black Cat and Jackpot. Uh, they did a four-issue one of Black Cat and Mary Jane Watson, which is very good. So, I don't know. We might get it. I haven't decided. All right. Number five. Issue five of Daredevil. like that cover. She-Hulk. Daredevil. It's funny because there's a famous Miller cover with Daredevil fighting the Hulk. Uh, all right, so Saladin Ahmed is our writer, Farid Karami is our artist, and it's She-Hulk, who knows, Matt Burdock's alive, they drew She-Hulk to look just, just fabulous, but she's uh, under the influence of a little gluttony demon, so that's an issue. It is fun to watch her and Matt go on a date, uh, the demon thing is like a overall story art kind of thing that they're working on and Doctor Strange shows up at the end so we'll see how that goes. The new Daredevil book is fun. I don't know why they have to keep renumbering things. I do know why. They want more money. Um, final issue of Cap Wolf and the Howling Commandos which has been so much fun. Writer is Stephanie Phillips. Artist is Carlos Mango. Magno. Magno. There we go. And it's Werewolf versus werewolf until they find a way to cure Steve Rogers and bury the whole thing and make sure that you never find out that Steve Rogers was a werewolf. And Nick Fury has both eyes at this point. He has not gotten to his eye patch. And it's it's white Nick Fury, not Sam Jackson Nick Fury. So this was still a lot of fun. Likes the little World War II thing, which was kind of a nice change of pace. Gang War continues in Amazing Spider-Man number 42. Uh, I probably could memorize that. Wells is our writer. John Romita Jr. is our penciler. Scott Hanna is our inker. And last we left, Kingpin and Tombstone were beating the crap out of each other until uh, Kingpin could make things go his way. And he got that taken care of. They abandoned one of the bad guys, so now that bad guy is hanging out with uh, a lady group. So, Madam Mask is getting ready to have a showdown with, I don't remember, oh, the Beetle. Mad Mask versus the Beetle. And they do end it with a really cool double feature, double spread of all the bad guys at Central Park getting ready to smack each other around. Alright, special number one of Sonic the Hedgehog with Fang, the hunter, the Australian fella. Uh, stories by Ian Flynn, pencils are Mauro Fonseca. Inks are Rick Mack, and Fang and this gang are after Sonic. They're going to get him, and he does not believe for a minute that he has anything to worry about. So, yep, yeah, it's fun. You have a, uh, I think that's a polar bear named Bark. There's a duck named Bean, and... They're after a mysterious new Chaos Emerald that we've never heard of before. So, it's a fun little adventure. I don't remember if it's continued. Let me take a peek for everybody. Oh, yep. 
Next time it's Fang versus Knuckles. So Fang is going to get hurt. Because Knuckles don't take no nothing from nobody. So, yep, still fun. Good times. Uh, we are introduced to the new series. It's an eight-issue mini-series of John Constantine Hellblazer Dead in America. And it's John up to his old tricks. Let me find you some uh, who did what. Simon Spurrier is our writer. Aaron Campbell is our artist. And John is uh, in America because he's dead. And John's been dead before. Sandman shows up in this. Original Dream, not his son, uh, shows up in this. And everybody is like, John, you're messing with things that you shouldn't touch. And he's like, no kidding. It's, it's John Constantine. So he goes looking for uh, Alec Holland, Swamp Thing. Uh, this is good. It's um, weird, but it's good. It continues off of the last time I bought a Hellblazer book, so I'm not lost. Uh, final one for last week is issue four of Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong. Yep, that's Aquaman. Because when you're fighting Kaiju, what do you need to do? Do you need to summon the Kraken? I didn't even know they were going to do that. Uh, Brian Bucolato is our writer, Christian Duce, and Tom Derenick are our artists. Um, Batman is freaking out because Superman's dead. He's not really dead. He'll be fine. Um, so Batman's freaking out. Uh, Supergirl has a staring contest with Kong, who understands her. The League of Assassins shows up to try to fight Green Arrow, but he has backup by King Kong. So, uh, the League of Assassins don't really have much of a chance. And then Godzilla decides to go underwater, so we get uh, the Kraken to help save the day. So that's kind of a, a nice, fun way to go. That's where they actually end it. Somebody even makes the joke, he released the Kraken. So there's an evil monster, Kaiju, the Kraken, and Godzilla, and all... And Arthur Aquaman is really serious about they have to make sure nothing happens to the dome in Atlantis. And I'm like, well, they're all water breathers. Is the dome not full of water? I don't know. They stopped making a good Aquaman book for years. I don't know. So that's last week's book. So let's take those and we'll put those in the bag. And we'll bring up our little stack of this week's. A lot of Disney. We have Hades, who finally, after four or five issues, has finally obtained the Golden Fleece. Elliot Kalan is our writer. Alessandro Rinalde is our artist. Um, they're having a Mount Olympus brunch when Hades shows up with uh, the Fleece and decides to change everybody into different things. Um, he turns Zeus into a worm. Poseidon is a cupcake. Hera is a lighting fixture. Ares is an insincere postcard. Hermes is a Grecian urn. Aphrodite is pickled uh, olives. And Athena is a futuristic to us, but somehow outdated physical recording media. He turned Athena into a VHS tape. So, but then people want to have the golden fleece, so they naturally steal it from Hades because he's Hades. And things don't go like Hades wants them to which is a normal thing for him. This is the final issue. Uh, the only thing that made me happy was that they announced in here that we will be getting a uh, Hercules series. So this was a lot of fun. All I can hear is James Woods talking when, uh, when I'm reading it, which is, I mean, yeah, he kind of turned into a trash fire, but it's still funny. Gang War 3, Spider-Woman. Spider-Woman is back. Steve Fox is our writer. Carola Borelli is our artist. And Spider-Woman is on a rampage because something has happened where she's the only one that remembers her son. Her little boy. Her baby boy. I think he's like one and a half or two. Uh, Madam Web shows up because they got the new Madam Web movie coming out. So you got to make sure she's in there. Uh, Jessica goes on a rampage after Hydra to find her child. And they do something really crappy at the end that I hope is a lie. I won't tell you what it is until next issue. Otherwise, it's a 
terrible cliffhanger. Terrible. But it's Spider-Woman, so I'm still going to buy it. Uh, Project Cryptid gives us three stories. Um, we have, let's just go down the list. Uh, the Tall Tale Tour. Uh, writer is Melissa F. Olson. Lane Lloyd is our illustrator. Cryptids Anonymous. Hannah Bahadri is our writer. Lane Lloyd, again, is our artist. And Ultra Terrestrials is Xander Cannon. Oh, Xander Cannon. I think he did, uh, oh, what was it? Kaiju Max is the writer. And Gene Ha, who we love Gene Ha, is uh, the illustrator. Why we love Gene Ha. Gene Ha was here at Fanfare Comics. And granddaughters went, and he said, I'm going to draw a picture for each of you. And Sophie said, I would like a picture of Spider-Man. So he drew a picture of Spider-Man. And then he looked at Theo and said, what would you like a picture of? She goes, you should draw a picture of me. And he's like, what? So he goes, is it okay if I snap a picture with my phone? Yes. Okay, can you smile for me? And she smiled for him. And he sat it down. And he drew the cutest picture of Sophie. And he was just flabbergasted. Oh, I'm sorry, Theo. Uh, he was just flabbergasted that this little kid, who was probably six at the time, just wanted a picture of herself. So, and I thought that was funny. So, Project Cryptid, the first story, the tall tale is the Hodag, which is part of Wisconsin, and it's a tourist group with a man who might not be a man telling them about the Hodag, and someone in the group deserves what they get. That's all I'll say. It's a very funny story. Um, the next one, although it says that it's Block Ness Monster, it's Cryptids Anonymous, it's all of them. Uh, and they're introducing a new uh, Krungus. Um, Krungus is a brand new cryptid uh, through an AI art generator because people typed Krungus into the generator and the face came, came up the same. So now Krungus is a AI generated cryptid and they're introducing him to the group Somebody tells him, don't worry, we don't bite. And one of the little monsters says, famously untrue. And uh, Bigfoot's in it, Yeti's in it, Nessie's in it giving her a slideshow. Uh, the the, the uh, Snallagaster, the big one-eyed flying screaming thing, I used it in the, one of the books I wrote, uh, is in it. And now he found out that they're having a festival in D.C. about the Snallagaster. And he's like, well, people aren't afraid of me. And they're like, yeah, but you could go and pretend to be a life-size Snallagaster cosplayer and get all the free beer. So he's on board with the thing. And then they have a fight between Yeti and Bigfoot and the Bermuda Blob shows up to break up the fight. So that was kind of nice. It was a funny story. Finally, we have a very short one called Ultra Terrestrials. Uh, they're saying that it's Extra Terrestrials for this one, which I guess that's true. It's about a guy who invents this thing where you can find extraterrestrials and cryptids using your phone. And he finds this hot alien girl in his room. And she's all excited to be with him until we find out later on that uh, she had just come here to get a uh, passing grade uh, for Department of Sociology on the planet she's from. Uh, according to this, she got a C-. minus. So... Project Cryptid is always fun. I like Project Cryptid a lot. What do we got here? Gargoyles, the Dark Ages. This is the final issue of this. This is a blast from the past. I love that cover. That is very good. And the, um, let's see. Where are my things? Here we are. Greg Weissman is the writer. Drew Moss is the artist. This actually tells us where gargoyles come from. When the gargoyles that are doing things they shouldn't with their little human friend wander into a cave where the dragon lives. And the dragon cannot stand humans. Dragons think that humans are vermin. And now, oh I'm sorry, this is the penultimate issue. There's one more issue with this. Now the dragon found out that the gargoyles, his spawn, have made friends with humans and he's not happy. So, we'll see how that ends, and that'll be the end of that. They're also ending the Gargoyle series, but they said that there's going to be another Gargoyle series, so we'll see. 
And then, final one. I saved it for last of the regular comic books. This is not the special comic book I was talking about. Um, issue 5 of Power Girl. Issue 5 of Power Girl is written by Leah Williams. Artist is Dave Baldion. And Power Girl and her friends have a cat. It is the super cat Streaky, who can fly and has laser eyes. And there's somebody stealing all the pets around the area for experimentation use. And Streaky goes on a rampage. Things I liked about this is the art is gorgeous. You hear what Streaky hears. He does not speak English. So when people talk, he hears what they what they hear. Like, uh, here we go. So the girl's holding Streaky. Comes in the room with the other girl. And the one girl says, Vishboo. And the other one replies, Nork. And then the other one replies, Bark he Margaret. And then finally one says, Crod. And you can tell they're speaking their language that Streaky can't understand because all the word balloons have cat ears. This is this is a delight. There's also a lot of panels very well drawn that have no words in them. And Streaky goes to save all of the pets from the evil, evil, mad doctor who it looks awful. And all the animals get loose and save the day. And at the end, when uh, the one girl wakes up, uh, we get it from their point of view. And Supergirl has shown up and asked Power Girl if she wants to do a mission with her uh, because it might be uh, illegal. So... This was a wonderful one and done. This is how comic books should be sometimes. One and done. Cats got superpowers. Silliness abounds. This was a great issue of Power Girl. I'm glad I picked up the book. So, they've been doing really good on the book lately. Before it was the Kryptonian lion, remember? Who was dying? That was... How dare you make me that sad about a Kryptonian lion? But, yep, this was great. Cover was great. Whole thing was great. So, finally. Okay, so. <coughs> let me cough. All right. Back in August, I was told that a comic book compilation was coming out. Uh, if anything's wrong with the video at that point, <laughs> it's because my camera person, Dan Lyon, just conked <laughs> it with her head. So that little glue right like there. So anyways, like I was saying, let me go back. Let me sum up. Let me say this. Um, so anyways... I mean, it was a toy that was introduced back in 1979 called Rom. Rom the Space Knight. And Marvel wanted to start picking up stuff. Jim Shooter was the CEO at the time, or editor-in-chief, not CEO. And he wanted to pick up some stuff, and they said, look at this toy. Well, how much background do they have on it? This, there's a paragraph on the box. That's what you get. It's like, okay. So, anyways, Bill Mantlo and Steve Buscema, Sal Buscema, that's Steve Buscemi. I don't think he can draw. Uh, anyways, Bill Mantlo, who invented Rocket Raccoon, for you people that need to know that, uh, and Sal Buscema, um, drew and brought us Rom the Space Knight. There are 79 issues plus four annuals, and he shows up in other stuff. So, anyways, in August, I started putting away $5, giving them to my clumsy camera person, uh, who put it in a jar or a box. And every week I would get them $5, figuring I would have more than enough money because the book I'm going to show you was $125. I know that sounds a lot. But I have my fanfare discount, so I got $25 right off the top. So, 100 bucks, Not too shabby, right? And so there's a paper cover around it. I took the paper cover off, so you get this glorious thing of ROM. Here is the front. Look at that. Isn't that great? It looks like a comic book. Like a like the first issue of the... This is the cover for the first issue. And then this is the back cover of the hard cover. The paper cover shows all the covers that are in it. All 39 issues. Plus an issue of Power Man and Iron Fist because Rom showed up in the Marvel Universe. He wasn't a standalone character. He's very in the Marvel Universe. So we get a guy uh, at the beginning who gives us a little bit of an introduction... Chris Ryall, um, I would have preferred not to have it white letters on black paper. I'm not a fan of that. 
Uh, my eyes are also not a fan of that. So, so it's the first 39 issues. It is a total of, hold on, let's see here. Oh, what we got? Uh, 715 pages. Uh, they even have like the letters page and stuff like that in here. So this is just a great thing. All the covers are being used. It's just wonderful to look at. Yeah, the letters pages are in all of these. So I got about 45 pages in. I have, you know, 640 some odd, 650 something pages to go. So this is how you do it. You save your money. A little bit every week. And then when it comes out, if you have your discount at Fanfare, they'll knock $25 right off the top. So this, this hefty tome, well worth the price. The only thing I know is because it says Volume 1, and I know that there are 79 issues plus four uh, annuals, that there will be a Volume 2. So I have already started saving money, except they're also getting ready to release the Marvel Godzilla collection when he was part of the Marvel Universe. The one time they shrank him down and he was wearing a little trench coat and he argued with J. Jonah Jameson. He didn't talk, but uh, I think he lit J. Jonah Jameson's cigar. I do know he set Dum Dum Dugan's uh, mustache on fire once. So, interesting. So that's what I'm saving for. So, anyways, now that i babbled about my ROM Space Night, yes, I'm very excited for getting it. Um, so this was two weeks worth. Thanks for waiting for me. I appreciate that. Be sure to tell all your friends, like and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Here's all the comic books for the last two weeks. This sort of throws the curveball off, right? And like I'm always telling you, you can go to the library. You can go to bookstores. Use bookstores have comic books sometimes. You can go to the lo your local comic book store if you have one and see if they've got a, a quarter bin or a 50 cent bin or a dollar bin. You can read them online. You don't have to read comic books about superheroes. I mean, Ron the Space Knight's not really a superhero. He's a guy that's a Caesar cyborg from outer space. He's not really a superhero. Um, it doesn't have to be about superheroes. It can be about silly stuff. It can be funny comics. It can be autobiographical comics. All this stuff is out there. You just got to go get it. You have to do a little bit of the work, I'm afraid. But you can watch a lot of it or read a lot of it on your phone. So, Sophie and Fiona, we went to... The book sale at the library, we get the bag of books for $3. Uh, we all got a bunch of books. Uh, Sophie is fascinated with gardening books right now because she loves gardening. So we got her a couple of those and she got a couple of, well, so they picked up their own books. Um, then it was the downtown Kalamazoo chili cook-off. Uh, my favorite was the one from Brick and Brine. It was the duck confit chili, super duper spicy. Uh, with little ground up pistachios on it, I'd never thought of doing that, and it was complemented it perfectly with the with the yummy duck on there. Uh, other chilies were great. I had one from Harvey's on the mall that I threw in the trash. It didn't look good, didn't smell good. There was a carrot in it. Not really sure what that was doing there. Uh, the other sad thing is that Taco Bob's is a famous place around here. It's a chain of rushed or taco places, and Every year, his chili, it was he would try to kill us. It was the hottest thing imaginable. It was awful. Uh, this year, it was a vegan, which, nothing wrong with that, vegan chili that was the blandest chili that we had. Uh, so unfortunately, Taco Bob died recently, like last year. So, we don't get the Taco Bob trying to murder us chili anymore, apparently. So, I was a little sad about that. Um, so, that's what we did uh, this weekend with uh, Fiona, Sophie. I'm glad that we got to do that. Girls, you, I, hope, I know you had a good time. And um, so that's it. Yeah, go get some comic books. I'll see you next week. Hopefully I, I don't have anything planned where I'm going to not do that. The minute I say that, something's going to come up and it'll be a double issue again, a double episode of uh, Old Man Reviews Comic Books. Um, so until then, I'll see you next week. Go read a comic book.